Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight for me all day long and oppress me. Mass this morning is offered for the intentions of Father Basil Pearson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, for the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Daniel. Susanna was condemned to death by the whole assembly. She cried out as loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that they have given false evidence against me. And now have I to die innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me. The Lord heard her cry, and as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit residing in a young boy named Daniel, who began to shout, I am innocent of this woman's death. At which all the people turned to him and asked, what do you mean by these words? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, Are you so stupid, sons of Israel, as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. All the people hurried back, and the elders said to Daniel, Come and sit with us, and tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. Daniel said, Keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. You have, grown, you have grown old in wickedness, he said, and now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you, you with your unjust judgments, your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of guilty men, when the Lord has said, you must not put the innocent and the just to death. Now then, since you saw them so clearly, Tell me what tree you saw them lying under. He replied, Under a mastic tree. Daniel said, True enough, your, li your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God has already received your sentence from him and will slash you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought and said to him, Spawn of Canaan, not of Judah. Beauty has seduced you. Lust 
has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel, and they were too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then, tell me what tree you surprised them under. He replied, under a holm oak. Daniel said, true enough, your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with the sword to drive home and split you and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, bless, shouted, blessing God, the saviour of those who trust in him. And they turned on the two elders whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As prescribed in the law of Moses, they sentenced them to the same punishment as they had intended to inflict on their neighbour. They put them to death. The life of an innocent woman was spared that day. The word of the Lord. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. Now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak he appeared in the temple again, and as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery, and making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman, who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
both the story of Susanna in the book of Daniel and the incident with the adulterous woman have been generously and very colourfully portrayed in classical Christian art. And in fact, if you look at any of the pictures of those two scenes, you'll see that usually the men in the paintings are portrayed as rather purient and voyeuristic as they enjoy the discomfiture of the respective women's, women who are being condemned. But the most important words in the whole of that gospel, really, are surely when our Lord says to the woman, I do not condemn you. Go away and do not sin anymore. It's from where we get the well-known saying, isn't it? Condemn the sin, but love the sinner. And those words, your sins are forgiven, go away, are repeated every hour of every day in every part of the world as the church, the instrument of God's mercy and salvation, pours out that mercy of God through the sacrament of penance. I absolve you from your sins. And it is always Christ himself who says those words through the instrumentality of the church of the priest. Saint Pope John Paul II, in his monumental letter on Penance and Reconciliation in 1984, writes this. The sacramental formula, I absolve you, and the imposition of the hand and the sign of the cross made over the penitent, show that at this moment, the contrite and converted sinner comes into contact with the power and mercy of God. It is the moment at which, in response to the penitent, the Trinity becomes present in order to blot out sin and restore innocence. And the saving power of the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus is also imparted to the penitent. God is always the one who is principally offended by sin, tibi soli peccavi, and God alone can forgive. Those words of absolution that the priest says are not just a kind of prayer of intercession or a prayer of supplication to ask God to forgive our sins. They are the actual pardon of God himself. As St. John Paul goes on to say, at that moment, every sin is forgiven and blotted out by the mysterious intervention of the Saviour. And there are few words in the whole universe that produce such joy when they're heard in the soul of the penitent one. I absolve you from your sins. St. Augustine says that the wonder they work is greater than the very creation of the world. Perhaps today as we reflect on those passages from the gospel, we can think about those moments in our own lives when we heard those words of the church pronounced over us. I absolve you from your sins. Go away and do not sin anymore. And that joy, the optimism and the hope that those words have given us. Let's thank God for this grace today to resolve once again to access this sacrament of divine pardon generously and as part of our apostolate to encourage others, our family and friends and loved ones to experience the same.
سوشی Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more. Spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervour of the saints.
the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward towards you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I could just remind you that uh, there's no private prayer possible after Mass this morning because I'm um, following the Mass this morning. There's a, a funeral here. So please pray for the repose of the soul of Claudio Catino. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your love. Jesus, our Lady of Lords, Saint Joseph, Holy Guardian Angel.